Happy Sunday, February 23rd, 2025. It's the 54th day of the year, and while things are relatively calm right now, we've got some major changes on the way that I'm just, you know, itching to talk about because we don't have a whole lot going on in the short term, but that's not to say that there's nothing going on. Here's one of the more interesting things that will happen over the next couple of days, and it's just the major temperature swing that's about to happen, especially in the central and southwestern United States. Check it out. Right now, we continue to have below average temperatures in the eastern and, and southeastern portions of the United States, but look at all that warm air out west and how quickly that's going to resonate pretty much across the entire United States. By Tuesday, most of us will be above average, except for maybe along the Gulf Coast, but you guys will catch up eventually. Look at all this warm air, especially compiling over the central U.S. This is going to feel like summer in the southwest and uh, spring in the central United States uh, as we go in into the early portion of next week. Check out this really interesting piece of information from North Dakota. On Wednesday, just a few days ago, uh, we had a temperature of negative 45 degrees. And then tomorrow, the high temperature is gonna be 50 degrees. Could actually be a couple degrees higher than that. So nearly a 100 degree temperature swing in a matter of days. That's what we're experiencing across a lot of the Southwest and Central US. And this is gonna lead to record-breaking warmth in the Southwest. This is going to eventually spread into the southeast as well. Uh, once again, we're all going to be warmer than average for a brief period of time. And the driving factor behind this warmth and this major turn that we're about to experience this winter is what's going to cause our next round of storms, which we will talk about right here in a minute. But first, let's mention some more short-term stuff. There's a couple of interesting things that I want to talk about that's going to happen over the next couple of days. One of those is an atmospheric river, which is going to continue in the northwest for the next couple of days which is going to drop a significant amount of rain in Washington and Oregon, a lot of snow in the Cascades. And then we've got this really unusual storm down here in the Gulf of Mexico as well that is kind of acting like a tropical slash subtropical system. And that's going to move over Louisiana and the Gulf Coast all the way into Florida, especially as we get into the day on Monday. And this is going to bring a deluge of uh, really heavy rain into Florida, especially around Miami and Fort Lauderdale on the days Monday and Tuesday. That could cause some flash flooding problems. And then on top of all that, we've got this cold front that's going to be coming down through the Northeast and the Ohio Valley, bringing another shot of cold air before we all start to see that warmth. And that'll also bring about some uh, snow showers and some rain showers with it. But check it out. We could see anywhere from two to three inches of rain in New Orleans, uh, maybe two to three inches of rain in Miami and Fort Lauderdale as well. But the thing that this forecast isn't showing us, I think, is the tropical nature of the downpours that are going to be happening down here. This is not going to be your average uh, rain shower in Florida. Florida, this is going to feel like something that you would typically expect to see in summer. I think there's going to be a couple of storms where we see one to two inch per hour rainfall rates, especially around Miami. In those places, we could see four inches, maybe five inches of rain. So I'm concerned about flash flooding over there. And then speaking of rainfall, we are going to see a lot of that in the northwest as well through Wednesday. Some places will see over nine inches of rain. Now, a lot of this is going to be in the form of snowfall in the higher elevations where we will see feet of snow. But just know that in the valleys, we do expect to see a lot of moisture. This could lead to flash flooding and landslides and all that good stuff. And something else that's going to come along with this atmospheric river, which isn't really talked about a lot in situations like this, are the 60 mile per hour winds that are going to be possible. Even beyond the Cascades over here in the Rockies and the High Plains, get ready for winds from Idaho all the way over into Wyoming. Now, moving beyond the short term and talking once again about the medium range and, and long range forecast, what does this major warm warm up mean? And what does the relatively quiet weather that we're experiencing right now mean for the next transition that we experience as we go into March? Well, all indications are pointing towards a very stormy and very active March. And I've got a lot of information about that to share with you right after we thank today's awesome sponsor. Factor, fresh, never frozen meals delivered right to your door. Now listen, whenever I'm tracking storms and doing these big long live streams, I need something quick and reliable to keep me going. And that's exactly why I love today's sponsor, Factor. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen meals right to your doorstep. These chef crafted meals are ready in just two minutes, which is great whether I'm busy at home with the kids or if I'm here keeping y'all updated on the latest weather developments. And the best part is with either one of those situations, I don't have to worry about the mess that comes along with cooking. What I really love about Factor is how flexible it is. With over 35 different meals to choose from, I can easily adjust my order size or pause delivery when I'm out of town. 
Plus, they've got really specific options depending on your diet, like keto and calorie smart. They've even got these new snack add-ons like breakfast smoothies, juices, and small bites. All this stuff I use during live streams whenever the weather gets plumb wild to keep me going. And something I do want to say is that this is better than your typical takeout dinner or what you're imagining when you think of something like Factor. This is actually really good. And on top of the fact that it's actually really good, it saves you time and money. So I don't know what you're waiting for. Head on over to Factor 7 com or click the link in the top of the description and use the code 50 haul y'all and get 50% off plus free shipping on your first factor box. That's right, 50% off. All you got to do is use this code right here, 50 haul y'all over at factor 75.com and you're going to get free shipping plus 50% off on your first box. You're going to love it. I want to say a huge shout out to factor for sponsoring this video. You guys know it's a really good thing whenever we get a sponsor. So please go support them and just honestly enjoy the meal. You're really going to enjoy this. Let us know how it goes in the comments below. Now let's get back into the video. Okay, let's take a look at the GFS ensembles here and kind of explain what's going on. You can see the big persistent ridge that's trying to form over here in the west. This is going to be responsible for the major warm up and persistent above average temperatures that we're going to see in the southwest over the next uh, six to 10 days. And once again, this warm air is going to build up in the southwest and it is going to propagate over into the central and eastern portions of the United States as well. The only place that might not get in on our fun in the sun here is going to be in the northeast. There will be intermittent periods of warmer temperatures up there, but the vast majority of your time will be spent below average, I think, in, for example, in Quebec and Maine. But this ridge is eventually going to let up, and there is going to be a pattern coming in that supports troughing, and this is really evident from about March 2nd through March 5th on the ensembles. So what we're looking at here is an average of a bunch of different model runs, and they all agree on this persistent trough that might be coming through the Rockies from March 2nd through March 5th, and it sticks around for a while. So this is telling me that we're going to have a really stormy start to March. That means that we could see very heavy snow in the Rockies and a lot of rain and severe weather in the Southeast. And once again, just look at this very persistent signal for a dip in the jet stream as we go all the way through March 5th. This is not something you see every day. This is 230 hours from now. Usually we don't get a very cohesive signal until we're about 120 hours out. So the fact that all of these models are agreeing on this means to me that we're likely going to see some sort of significant stormy weather pattern in early March. And what does that look like on our surface map? Well, first of all, we are going to see one more shot of cooler weather with that cold front that's coming in after Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. This is going to bring some snow showers and some rain showers to the northeast. The rain's going to make it all the way back into Texas and then eventually into the southeast coast. And then we're going to have some very quiet weather with just some clippers and some gulf moisture sneaking into Texas. The main story is going to be that big ridge that's bringing warm air to the Midwest and, and eventually into the southeast. But watch what happens here. We start to see widespread precipitation east of the Rockies and we start to see these low pressure systems form. And this is the ensemble, so we're not going to see anything very high resolution here. But the general gist is just storminess. We're going to have a lot of moisture and a lot of activity just constantly hitting the eastern and southeastern side of the United States all the way through March 11th, potentially. I think a lot of this is going to come in the form of severe weather, and it lines up almost perfectly where our average tornado risk area is in March, okay? So we would normally expect some severe weather to happen from Oklahoma all the way over towards Georgia this time of year, and I think that this is the exact area that needs to be on guard as we go through the beginning half of March. I think we're going to be talking a lot about you guys as these storm systems start to roll in. So don't be scared. Be prepared. Now is the time to go over your tornado action plan. Know what you're going to do whenever that warning comes through. And of course, make sure you're subscribed to this channel because whenever stuff hits the fan, uh, we're going to be right here for you live, maybe for 12 hours straight as the storms are coming in with storm chasers on the ground and all that good stuff. So hopefully we don't have to do that, but we are here for you completely free. Just hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on. But trying not to focus too much on the negatives, uh, let, let's enjoy the break that we're having, okay? Yeah, we're going to have a couple shots of cold air in the northeast. We're going to have some rain in the southeast and the northwest. But a lot of us are going to be experiencing very normal and very calm weather for the next six to ten days. Let's just soak that in and, uh, you know, just not worry too much about the weather until those storms actually start coming in, okay? So here's that six to ten 
10 day temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. Very much above average in the southwest. Once again, some all time records might be broken for February down here in the southwest. And then we're going to feel those spring like temperatures maybe all the way up into North Dakota, South Dakota, over towards Minnesota and Iowa as well. So get ready for the major weather whiplash. And just a brief update on what we're doing with the Y'all Squad. You guys went over to the Y'all Squad.org. We've raised well over $100,000 just in the past week. And we're using that and much more helping people out in eastern Kentucky and West Virginia and Virginia after the major floods that just happened. We have dropped off several truckloads of supplies and we've actually been able to house people. We put people in apartments. We've bought extended stays at hotels. We've done a lot of things for a lot of different people and we wouldn't have been able to do that without you. So if you want to help us continue to do that, consider going over to the yallsquad.org and making a contribution to our 501c3 nonprofit organization. And that's pretty much all the weather talk I have for you today. I really appreciate you all for tuning in. Make sure you slap that like button and uh, subscribe to the channel. Also, huge shout out to Factor. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. It means a lot whenever we get a sponsor and it helps out so much. So I hope you guys go support them. Always support the people that support us and it's just another way that helps us keep going. And yeah, hopefully you guys don't have to see me again uh, for a couple of days. I'm going to try to not post a video until we have some concrete evidence that there's a big storm coming and then we will probably be doing daily videos very soon through the beginning of March and live streams and all that good stuff. So uh, we're going to be working on some stuff in the back end and of course continuing to help out with the y'all squad. But until next time, enjoy the mostly calm weather and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.